In a career where one hundredth of a second can make the difference between winning and losing, she made her mark. Susie O'Neill, our Madam Butterfly, pushed through the yellow line to become one of Australia's greatest successes. The line coming at her! Hang on, Susie! Hang on, Susie! Five to go! You're gonna do it, are you? Susie! Yes! 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 She's done it! My coach said just try and win it by as much as you can, like never give a sucker an even break. With a record 35 Australian titles, eight Olympic medals, Australia's female world record holder has inspired our nation. I wanted people to see me as unbeatable, outwardly. The look of a confident person or someone who is unbeatable. I say outwardly because inside I was probably as scared or as worried as the rest of them. When nine-year-old Susie wrote in a school project that she was going to swim for Australia, no one believed the shy girl capable of it, least of all herself. It was her coach, Bernie Wakefield, who recognised Susie's gift. He said to me that people are going to remember you like Shane Gould one day, and um, that just sort of spun me out. Competition didn't come naturally. Susie battled nerves, shyness, and even a fear of putting her head under the water. I'd dive in, do a couple of strokes and basically put my head up and be pulled out. So as a consequence, I was a backstroker when I was younger because my head could be out of the water the whole time. What then gave you the confidence to put your head back in the water? Um, well, it was all a sort of psychological thing, obviously. Um, I was a very nervous competitor and my coach used to do breathing exercises with me, just trying to get me relaxed and put it into perspective. Susie burst into the competitive swimming arena in 1989, attaining a position in the Australian swimming team. However, she soon felt she was going backwards. 1994, I got um, two bronze medals at the World Championships. In my eyes, I thought it was just the end of the world. Didn't really want to be there at the competition, so it's not a very good mindset to be in. And I um, thought about retiring, um, but instead decided to change coaches. Having been with the same coach since she was nine years old, it was a tough decision. It sounds a bit um, cold-hearted, but um, he was like a grandfather to me. But as far as coaching-wise, he was sort of... I felt like I'd outgrown him. The change worked, and Susie went on to win gold. Susie retired at the pinnacle of her swimming career and now has a new challenge on the way, motherhood. Having a baby, I don't know. Obviously, that's meant to be... Um, People call it an achievement. I don't know. It's different because it's weird because I haven't had a child yet, so I'm not sure what it's going to feel like. But um. Do you feel that before success was winning that gold medal and now success, what is it? Yeah, that's a hard question. Um, because I was such an ambitious person, success was always achieving my goals. Now I don't have that much ambition at this particular time in my life. I don't think I'm going to feel like that for the next 20 years. I feel like there is something else out there that I want to challenge me or there's some things I want to achieve. I'm not sure exactly what they are yet at this stage, if you know what I mean. But at the moment, it's, it's more about lifestyle and, and our family. It really is interesting when you start to unravel what success actually means. It depends on what's important to you. We hope the show has given you some answers or maybe a few ideas about your success. Because after all, it's the little things that make the big differences. Thanks for watching. Bye. The biggest risk of all is to not take a risk. Every waking moment, I think you have to be committed to your goal. Be proud of who you are and strive hard and you'll be happy as me and you, Kieran. Exactly right. But anybody can do it. Do it and do it well and be happy.